Um, and Lins Linska, now I'm not, I'm not very good at pronouncing. Is it, is it Rams, Ram Ram Ramstein? Yep. Good, thank you. Page 75, Thanks. I wasn't going to tell you. Um, hi everybody, my, yeah, obviously my name's Linska. I've only been in New Brighton for a year. I'm actually a flight attendant, so I only spend about 70% of my time at, uh, sorry, 25 or 30% of my time at home. The rest of it is in Australia. So as Leanne has just pointed out, um, I have put on my submission about the small free-to-charge barbecues. In Brisbane, you've got South Bank. I've seen time and time again, we've gone over there as crew, we've gone and had barbecues there. You just bring in international people or even families out into the area to enjoy. Um, because I haven't spent a whole lot of time in South Brighton since I've been there, I've really actually just come to support everyone that knows what they're talking about. Who, but as you can see, there's a huge amount of people that have submitted, which is amazing. So I just wanted to reiterate what I've written on the back page. We have an amazing area which has good phones. It can be easily amplified with the support and the help from the Christchurch City Council. It would be a great idea to invest in these areas rather than allocate the funds to entirely new projects. We've already got quite a bit of stuff going on there, so if we can just keep the ball rolling there. Um, you have a community that is already in full swing to improve the area, so it can be done. Basically, that was just what I wanted to reiterate. Of course, I talked to lots of people that are coming internationally into Christchurch. Um, they come into the city and they're actually quite devastated by what they see. However, you can talk to them about all the projects that are happening in the central city. To talk too much about New Brighton doesn't really happen because they do sort of focus um, that area. But again, um, as Cathy probably said, uh, sorry, um, to focus tourism into that area as well once we get the, the roading and all that sort of stuff done and then we can be sending people out there. They're not going through potholes. They're not feeling that emotional connection, I guess, to what they've watched about the earthquakes, it's going to stand um, in itself. So that kind of comes back down to the, the jewel of Christchurch, if we can. Yeah, well, I've just, um, I've done a lot of reading, obviously, since the earthquakes happened yeah. and came across something called asset-based community development. It's easy to remember because it's A, B, C, D. And um, uh, Jim Dears and um, John McKnight are sort of kind of proponents of this of this idea, which is that instead of looking at things from a needs base, you look at what are the assets that are yeah. already there and you build on those. And yeah. when you look at New Brighton, you can really see what the assets are. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to identify problems. Yeah. It's much easier to start with what are the assets and how do you strengthen those. Because, yeah. I mean, one day, I mean, I'll, I'll take Paul, but one day... Um, <coughs> I said this to someone the other day, you know, that photographs of overflowing rubbish bins and it's the council's fault, not the people that put rubbish into a bin that was already full. Yeah. So one, and I said that there are some parks that I've seen in other parts of the country and overseas who don't have rubbish bins. They just have a sign that say, don't leave any rubbish behind, you know, yeah. and they get people to take their rubbish away. And um, when I repeated this to someone in New Brighton, they said, we'll get there. We'll get to the point where we will be able to trust people to do that. But in yeah. the meantime, we're going to have to um, find a way of making those rubbish tins effective and actually provide recycling facilities yeah, there at the same say, time. Recycling is a massive thing that you see everywhere, and it works quite well, I think. Exactly. So uh, Paul and then Glenn? Actually, the mayor is quite right. They've, they had done a bit of research around rubbish tins create rubbish. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's like roads, it's like it's like roads create cars <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to but use them. <laughs> with, with your travels and stuff, yeah. uh, uh, and, and in my view, but I would like to hear your point, do you think that Christchurch has just forgotten that actually it is a, is a beachside city? Yeah, definitely. I don't think there's any direction... Um, anywhere apart from maybe a few local businesses that try and send people out that way. Um, and you have people that would go out there and they're like, oh, it's like we're back in the 60s or something. You know, it just hasn't travelled forward from that time. It used to be amazing, that, you know, you see all that sort of thing. And it was amazing to get the library and all that area up and running, but it still hasn't connected properly. Um, lots of people 
that I've seen in the library and stuff, they just go in there and sit in there. They're travelling as well. It's a great hub for them to go to. So that's a great asset as well um, as the beach. But, yeah, no, I don't think they know about that beach. They'll come to see the city yep. and then they'll cruise over to the west coast, see all that beauty over there, go down to Queenstown, fly back out again. Some of that's to do with though, uh, the, the, the travel to, the, to those uh, yep. natural assets and we yep. don't have very good travel to those natural assets. You have to go through like, a, uh, I think uh, uh, Gary Moore talked yeah. about the speed hump. I mean, yep. whether you're going to Sumner or to New Brighton, yep. it is like a big speed hump <laughs> all the way there. And, and some of it's also to do with signage on how to get there and actually feel, feeling like you're going on a journey somewhere. Correct. So yeah. if you're going through the wilderness, and I think the trip to Brighton is sometimes you go through a wilderness <laughs> of, of nothing and it's actually yeah. creating something on the way so you actually feel like you're travelling somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think, again, like it just comes down to let's just have some nice roads that people can drive on in their rental cars if they're going to go out there or let's have some bus services that specifically go to those um, areas. I mean, that's something to build on gradually. Like, obviously, you can't just put it in there now. No one's going to go. It's not going to be sustainable. Um, but definitely, I think that there is potential to have that, that visitors coming in will know about that area and they'll actually go to that area um, as well for Christchurch. Thank you. All right, Glenn. Thank, thank you, Linsica, for um, highlighting how different, obviously, coastal communities are. Yeah. So, in terms of rubbish bins, we've had a very good offer, uh, whereby mm -hmm. we've also realised that if you use the same rubbish bins throughout the city, it doesn't work. In coastal communities, you've got wind, seagulls, and people right. like to be on the beach. They take fish and chip papers. So, I think, you know, our community board can look at um, that offer, at least, that's been put towards it and come up with something different. If you have the same bins throughout the city, it'll work in some places, but it won't work. And you will have seen this. And yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the ones that are sort of a bit lower and they've just got a, the hole in the middle, um, you kind of see them a lot in Australia. There will always be a recycle and then a rubbish. And yeah, if you're just putting it into the bin, then rather than having this top bin and then trying to put it, it's just like a literally a small hole. You can't actually fit too much stuff so people would have to take that stuff away mm. and I think I have seen a lot of the community taking responsibility for the rubbish that may be overflowing and taking it back to their homes or walking along the beach and seeing that mm. it's more of visitors that are coming um, I don't know from the other side of this well no it could it could be everyone I'm not gonna I'm not saying visitors international but you know people are just going to come if they're traveling with five kids and they're going to go back to the other side of the city they don't necessarily have the room to take all the rubbish back with them. So the facility is always necessary to have, you know, like you say, a really good system going on. Don't know what that is. You guys probably know a bit better than I do. <laughs> My views are just from, you know, sort of what I've seen, but like I said, I didn't really prepare anything because I'm no, no. sort of away all the time and I just um, wanted to... No, are you, are you you're new New Brighton? New New Brighton. So... If, if, and Jason, I think, said he surfed, so I've surfed you know, all over. So from Kaikoura to the Catlins, all east coast, yeah. you go to Timaru, they, they've really invested in Caroline Bay, which is beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, if you want a cold easterly, you can get out of the water in Kaikoura, the Catlins, yeah. apart from the refreshing water temperature. But why is it, do you think, that Christchurch, we, as everyone focuses on the easterly, which no one else in Dunedin, go to Omaru, go to Ke anywhere, why is it that Christchurch sees this as such, it's just something that everyone talks about, which is, in a sense, odd? Um, I can't really say anything about it. I haven't noticed it. As I say, I'll go away for five days. I'll be at home for two days. I love it. I love being there. Even if it is blowing a gale, um, I'm from Wellington, so <laughs> <laughs> it's no problem to me. <laughs> yeah, it's a light breeze. <laughs> um, and, you know, like I've lived over in Fox Glacier for a few years and been in tourism over there as well. You know, I've sort of been all around. I, I love living out there. I'm down the South Brighton end, so I would like to see, you know, some of these things, not just being up North Brighton. Yep. It's nice to be down si South Brighton because it's nice and quiet. Not as many people go there, but it would be nice that there was more of a draw for, you know, people to come down there if they wanted. I mean, all summer I've, when I've come home, there's been cars all lined up right down Marine Parade. Yeah. Kite surfing, you know, people are coming from other places there, so just adding Plus little things in. And so 
Yeah. Yeah. Look, thank you very thank much. You so much. That, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the that's the kind of end of the um, of the New Brighton um, group, and I'm I'm mindful of the fact that Emma uh, came in this morning and through a miscommunication, I thought that she had presented when she came up here. So she wants to quickly present um, probably the St Albans um, uh, group. Uh, sorry, I'm trying trying to read. Yes, uh, St Albans Residents Association submission. I mean, some of the issues have already been raised by others, but if you want to quickly come forward and just cover that off, and while you're coming forward, I'll just say thank you to everyone who spoke. You weren't really just speaking for yourselves. I think you were speaking for the hundreds of submissions that we have received. I think that um, what's happened today is that even though we haven't had the numbers, this has been much more engaged. There's been time for questions. People have ha been able to feed back and bounce ideas. And I think that's a much more constructive way to have a hearing. I promise we'll never have hearings again, but you know th this, is, this has been much better than just the quick five minutes and, and no opportunity to engage. And that's why I'm actually really pleased with the the numbers of you are here today because you've actually traversed all of the issues and you've presented um, really well for your community. So there is no question that this council is going to be reporting back an LTP that will make sure that um, New Brighton has the capacity to be the legacy project for Christchurch. So thank you very, very much. And Emma, if I could hand over to you now.